Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Alpha Omega Occasionally. And this occasion, by the way, we're not cutting any corners. We're telling it as it is. We always do. This is an exact account of something that happened to me last Friday. Well, last Friday, I was gonna say last Friday night, but it started at three o'clock in the afternoon and it didn't finish till 10 past 12 in the morning, the following morning. And that was my drive down to Patia with my wife and son to enjoy the fireworks night. Now for me, I, she didn't even tell me why we were going down. She just said we, she'd booked, she got a hotel. She'd booked a hotel um, in Soy Bacow. Is that pronounced correctly? Um, I go to Paddy a lot, but I don't know the names. That, I presume it's pronounced correctly. That's where the hotel uh, was. I'm not gonna mention any names or anything like that, never do. But here's the deal. We left Bangkok at about five past three. We're literally on the motorway, at the gate, on the motorway, heading south. I paid me money to get on the motorway at about five past three. And we arrived in the hotel at 10 past 12. That's nine hours later. And you might say to yourself, well, if you don't know Thailand that well, well, I can tell you, Pattaya is 130, say, 100 ballpark, 130 kilometers uh, south of Bangkok. And it normally takes, what would you say, an hour and maybe an hour and a half tops to get there. But this took us nine hours. And you see, one of the reasons the missus never told me why we were going is the same reason she never told me why we were going to Myanmar, because she knew I'd probably object. You see, fireworks are fireworks, but I don't want to sit on the beach. I didn't want to sit on the beach from five o'clock in the afternoon till half past, I think it was half past eight when the firework display kicked off. You had to sit yourself down there, you see, because there was about a million people down in Pattaya and you had to find your, rent your deck chair, as it were, um, beforehand. And that's what we had to do, but I'm just telling you about the trip down. We got into Pattaya about three hours after leaving Bangkok. The traffic was heavy enough. It was a Friday. And I kind of said to me, now, I didn't know anything about, I didn't know about the, the fireworks thing at this stage. I didn't know there were a million people coming down from Bangkok. To, to see the fireworks. They'd come down the night before. That was the night before. That was the Friday night. We were booked for the Saturday night. There was two nights of it. But I said, I didn't know anything about this. So when I got into Patia, I was going to Patia Klang and I was making the right turn down the hill, if you know it. And before we could get there, before we could get up to the traffic light to make the turn, it was jammers. It was completely blocked. I said to myself, oh my God, I've never seen it this bad. And then she pipes up. I could hear the fireworks going off, you see, at this stage. She piped up, oh, it's the fireworks. I said, they're all down. It kind of dawned on me then. They're all down for the fireworks. And we sat there for about, I'd say it took us 30 minutes to get down. Even halfway down, I was, she was using Google Maps. And halfway down the road there to Patty Lang, she said, you turn right, you turn left. We turned left, and as we inched forward, it took us about another 30 minutes to travel about 100 meters. And as we got to this junction where we had to, the hotel was within spitting distance, the police closed off the road with traffic cones because of congestion, and we had to take a detour. We were, I don't know why many streets we went up and down and back and forward, and just, uh, no, it wasn't up and down, but how many streets went left and right and so on. on. But there was one stage where we were actually stopped, and I mean stopped for about an hour and a half without moving. And it was a bit funny, actually. The girls that were in the bars, there was this street, what was the name of the bar? What was the name of the bar? Oh, I can't think of it. I, I, I do, and I couldn't repeat it on YouTube. But anyway, one of the, a couple of the girls were, I had to win the roll down. Harry was on my lap because I had to keep him, you know, occupied. He was messing with the indicators and stuff like that, or the turn signals, as you call them in the States. And they started waving at us. And there was two guys sitting at the bar looking out onto the street. And they raised their glass, their glasses and beckoned me to come on. Like, I might as well have a beer while I'm waiting. But you see, 
I didn't want if I started drinking I'd keep drinking you couldn't just have one drink and start excuse me now I'll go back and sit in my car and wait some more you know but I would have loved to take taken up the, the opportunity but I didn't, I didn't but that's how ridiculous the situation was and when we got sorted we got to the hotel I was flaked I was so tired the next morning we did a, whatever you do on your vacation went down the beach I made a video for the big picture El Panorama this one here it's uh, it's very good, very good. I met one of the most beautiful girls I've ever met in my life. But they were all g- getting ready, you see, on the beach for this uh, this uh, this this fireworks display. And as the night progressed, you know, we were there from about five. Or half, half, well, it wasn't. We went back to the hotel. Anyway. It was about 7 o'clock we went back down to the beach. That's what we did. Or was it 6? She had already got the deck chairs booked, you see. But I decided I'd go to 7-Eleven to buy beers. And literally, you're talking about, I'd say, you see where that red parasol is down there? I don't know if you can see it. There's a red parasol down there. That's how far away. It was about 50 metres to 7-Eleven. And when I got there, I couldn't get in the door. There were so many people. And it took, you, you were ushered around in a, in a kind of clockwise, it was a clockwise direction? Yeah, clo- it was an anti-clockwise direction. Um, but the thing about this is that this event, this fireworks event, was organised, as far as I was aware, this is what I was told by the hoteliers of Patia, to drum up business. And it worked a treat, of course it worked a treat. Every, every hotel was booked out, ours was booked, completely booked. It worked a treat. It was a bonanza for all the businesses. Well done. But you see, they go and organise something like this without an inkling of thought for what would happen to the, to the infrastructure of Patia as a result of a million people just descending on the city. And it's not even a city. It's a, it's a large town descending on it, you know, on one night. Nine hours from Pan- Bangkok to Pattaya is a record. Well, it's not nine hours from Bangkok to Pattaya, but it's nine hours from A to B, from leaving at the toll gate. Now, I'm not even talking about leaving the house. At the toll gate in Bangkok to the hotel in Soi Pakao, or Bacau, Bacau, is it Bacau? Um, it was nine hours, nine hours and five minutes, basically. That's basically what it was. And so it's crazy. It's the craziness of, of, of Pattaya. It's the craziness of Thailand. That they go and organise these very successful, really well, well run, well presented, well executed, wonderful fireworks display. But they don't give a damn about the traffic management. I remember when IKEA opened up in Dublin, um, they, had to, they had to amend the, the transport infrastructure uh, before they would grant IKEA. Uh, a license to trade uh, they had to they they had to um, you know they had to supplement the cost of extending a road or widening a road or building a link or a, or a ramp or something like that but the the traffic management was considered um, along with the management of the actual event here it didn't seem to be uh, on the agenda whatsoever and that's not a negative that's just an obvious thing uh, of this wonderful place that you know if you're ever going anywhere here and there's an event taking place don't take it for granted that you're going to be able to get there in good time unless you leave in very very good time prior like three o'clock in the afternoon leaving Bangkok you would expect you would expect even on a busy weekend to be in your hotel about three three and a half hours later you know ballpark you see my wife is tired she was aware of all this but it didn't dawn on her that this would happen or maybe it's maybe it's it's wrong of me to say that it should dawn on her but it was catastrophic to say the least so there you go that's the craziness of thailand that's how crazy it can be here and it's wonderful it's unexpected it's unprecedented and that's what makes life so interesting here. I hope you've enjoyed this. And make sure if you have done, click that like button, click the subscribe button, click
click the notifications bell. Make sure you do that. And I'll see you back here again for another wonderful video very soon. Thanks for joining me.